Welcome YouTube, this OG Weasel, Urban Conversion, and I'm back again with another story. And if you're just now tuning in, hit that like and subscribe button for your boy. I got clemency from President Obama under his administration. I was one of the fortunate ones to receive that blessing. I'm home. After 20 years, after 20 years in the feds, I had a 30-year sentence. That was a 360-month sentence that I was um, served at the age of 25. Getting straight into the story, I'm on my way to the gym, y'all. I gotta get back. But on another, uh, getting back, I read in the comments, somebody has said, you comfortable at one jail, you make a name for yourself at one jail, you get comfortable, you get acclimated in the routine of being at that jail. Then you turn around, and have to uproot and go to another jail. Sometimes when the, when the paperwork done properly, you get you you transfer from the from the compound. That means you 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 pack your clothes up, you pack, pack your little jogging suits and your little food and your little items that you got. You pack that up and you turn it in to R and D. And when they call the bus in the chain for you to leave, you get on the bus. You might still have to go through Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a transit center. You know, if y'all got a state prison, if y'all in the state, I'm pretty sure the, the state system got a diagnostic center. The diagnostic center is where they, you know, like get you, um, in the system, get you quarantined, let you see the doctor, you have to get a physical, all of that, and see if you, you know, but in the feds, when you go into, when you go to Oklahoma, and it's only one, nah, they got a transit center, I think they got a transit center in like Brooklyn, New York, something like that, we stopped there before, we stopped there before, but we didn't, uh, I didn't have to go through that process. I think they got a transit center like in, in, in Brooklyn on the East Coast. So when you going, now if you get in trouble for a fight, and all fights don't uh, constitute you getting transferred. I got transferred from a fight that I had where well, it wasn't no fight. I just knocked them out and I hit the other dude like 300 times. They still looking at the camera, counting the punches. And by the way, man, I, I, I got my logo on, you know, trilateral bully count. You know what I'm saying? If y'all want a Frenchie, we got some nice exotic bullies too as well. We got the Frenchies, the French Bulldogs. Go over to trilateral bully count and see what you like. Trilateralbullycamp.com and uh, see if you want a puppy. We do transport as well. We do transport as well, so um, it's no problem. But back to the story. Going into the, going to Oklahoma. See, I never had to go to Oklahoma. I went to Oklahoma. All the times I went to Oklahoma, I had to leave from the hole. And from a fight that I had, so I got to go sit in the hole for, at one time that I got transferred, I stayed in the hole for like 11 months. 11 months from this fight. Had a fight with an Inglewood blood nigga, that nigga that had, a, a, a dude that had Inglewood family on his back from California. But anyway, I'm going to give y'all several stories today, all in one. So anyway, when I knocked him out, I, knocked, I, I hit his homie a few times. Police locked us up. I went to the shoe. And I went to the shoe and shit. Sat in that motherfucker for like 11 months before I got transferred. People, a lot of people was trying to. I got my whole car locked up. I really got the whole down there. My whole St. Louis crew locked up on that fight. But transferring. The guards just take your shit, pack it how they want to. Shit, 
shit, a lot of shit that you ain't gonna be able to take, they throw it away. Then you gotta go sit in the hole for the disciplinary action that you have to sit there. Then if it's if it's if they say you have it want you to get transferred, they gonna transfer you. Me personally, I know they transferring me. I don't get no breaks, you know. I got a case that carry five years, a mandatory five years for 2,000 grams of uh, Schedule II narcotic, and I get a 30-year sentence. Non-violent offense. Pay attention, y'all. I went through this under the era of throw the black man away. So young and coming up, going through that situation, having to get transferred, then going through Oklahoma. Then you might sit in Oklahoma, it's a transit center, so there's it's minimum food, it's no hygiene, they give you a little squirt package of deodorant, you squirt it up under you and rub it, and you better not walk too far, or you gonna um, be sweating and stinking again. The food is minimum. Everything minimal. And it's and, and it's and it's um it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable as hell. It's uncomfortable as hell. So then when you get to the institution that you des designated to, your property ain't gonna be they ain't gonna give you your property for another two, three weeks. I'm talking about your jogging suits, your tennis shoes, um, because they gonna give you some blue shoes and some khaki pants and a t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Then when you get to laundry, they gonna give you your khakis and all of that because you can't bring no khakis and shit. The khaki uniforms that we wear, you can't bring that shit with you. Belts or nothing, you know? You get there, you don't have nothing. They gonna, uh, laundry day gonna be the following day. So you stinking coming from the airport, coming from the plane, from Oklahoma, then got on the plane at three o'clock in the morning, standing around, you know, uh, you ain't eating heavy because you don't wanna have to use the restroom while you in transit. You know what I'm saying? You might be in transit two and three days. You ain't you ain't trying to be uh, having a boo-boo or, you know, stuff like that. So you being count, you being, in, in, you be accountable for how you eating this shit, especially in transit. That shit's so uncomfortable. Going through that transition, man, it's just like you get used to it at after a while, you get so used to that shit, man, that shit comes second nature. Being in the federal system brought, a, brought upon a, a certain discipline to me and a lot of other people. You tap into disciplines that you don't even know nothing about, that you wouldn't even um, challenge yourself had you be on this side of the world. You wouldn't even challenge yourself to the to the um disciplines and I and you know they say it's like the army but it's nothing like the army not to me I'd rather be diving in 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 the dirt popping my pistol than to be in prison you know that's just me another note um yes it was very uncomfortable going through transit, um, having to deal with the um, the racist, well, the tactics. I ain't gonna say racist, but you you, you pretty more, much know that it is. Other than that, hell yeah, it's a hell of a transition going through transit, getting uprooted from jail to jail, especially when you're kicking up dust and and being a badass. I never, I probably left the institution on my feet walking out, opposed to leaving out from the shoe, maybe once. 
I want to say twice, but I think just once. They always black box me because my hands registered. <laughs> but they always black box me and 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 had something in my file that I was um, a fighter. So guards took precautionary measures, you know, for those individuals that they felt like that had to wear the black box. But it had to be something in your file for them to even issue the black box. Because if you put a black box on a person that they security level don't max, max that, the guards can get in trouble behind that. You're getting black box. Even on my way to a camp, this minimum, this account with no fence, well, this one had a fence. I went to Leavenworth, I made it all the way down to Leavenworth camp. I'm, I lasted for about 30, 60 days. I'll tell y'all a story about how I blew the camp in the next seven. Maybe I'll tell y'all after I'm done with my workout. But I made it to the camp and even going to the camp where predominantly a lot of the camps don't have no fence. It's just a jail. It's just an institutional uh, building. And it don't have a fence. It don't have, you can leave. You can leave. And it's only one guard and all of that. Early on, I used to tell yourself you are gonna leave as soon as you made it to that. But they had got so much of my youth out of me. By that time, going knowing that I was on my way out the door, I had received clemency. Um, everything that I had been through, it seemed like it had um, was worth it. Not really worth it. I was like I said, I was one of the fortunate ones to get blessed with the uh, clemency program through Obama. So all of the things that I had been through, the the aggressive attitudes and all of that, just having to just a having to have a certain mental aggression. Cause, because when you get to the camp, it's just like, these guys ain't, these guys come straight from the streets. They don't know the code and the ethics of, of, of being around guys that's really convicts and stuff like that. But that's another story. I'll tell y'all about that too, you know. But yes, it was uncomfortable going through transit, getting uprooted jail to jail. Every time you get transferred, you know, especially from the whole, the guards play with your mail, you don't get your mail, uh, you don't get a phone call, you might be having, you might be on phone restrictions, you still can't get the phone, none of that. Sometimes they give you a little hardship phone call if something drastic happened. But you have, I watch individuals run around in jails begging different counselors for hardship phone calls and stuff like that. So it ain't that we don't go through three things. We do go through things when in the federal system. And you come across uh, a sense of uh, sympathy and, and empathy for other men around you because people, family dying, mothers dying, um, fathers passing, sisters dying, children dying, and the feds ain't letting you go to no funerals. They not escorting you to no funerals. It's a lot of loopholes. They even charge you, even if you eligible. The funerals, you know, like if somebody passed they not even gonna shuffle the paperwork fast enough even if you eligible. If the warden sign off for you to um, go home under security guard, they gonna ask you to pay for the guards. You gonna have to pay for the guards, the transport, and you're not gonna be able to attend the funeral. You're just gonna be able to go through on a wait visit when nobody there type stuff because, you know, and you will have to pay for it. I'm talking about thousands. 
thousand. Cause like I said, these guards making 30, 40 dollars an hour. You know what I'm saying? And to take you whatever state or maybe have to fly. It's it's a mess, man. Going through going through that shit. And somebody asked me about getting uprooted. How is it? Yes, it's terrible. But you make do. You make do and uh you deal with it. Going through that, you won't be able to get your paperwork done. You're going to miss court dates. You're going to miss deadlines. Um, especially, and that's just my perspective from the whole. Other than that, man, it's OG Weasel Urban Conversion, man. And I hope I um, touch bases with the person that asked me that question. Uh, I'm going to be getting down to some stories, some questions. I'm gonna answer some questions, some do some stories. You know, it's us, man. And I wanna get, I wanna make it a little more personalized and talk about the things that I went through dealing with the United States um, of America. That's what the that's what the indictment say. United States of America. It don't say St. Louis, Missouri. It don't say. Uh, Michigan, it don't say California, don't say Baltimore, don't say this, it don't say California, say the United States of America. So, I want to tell you about the process and the things that, and I want to, I want some younger guys to tune in to this channel too, man, because I want to give up some game, man, and 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 just give it to y'all raw and uncut and let y'all know what y'all facing, man, when y'all dealing with the feds. No matter on what level, whether it's a drug dealing, dealing with the feds on the drug dealing side, the robbery side, white collar crime, the feds gonna handle you the same exact way. Don't matter. You're not exempt. The feds even got Robin Hood. I did that in the last segment. The feds had Robin Hood. And the feds name you Robin Hood, the feds in their office walking around, the, they looking, they, they, whatever investigation they doing, they calling this dude, my homeboy, B, they calling him Robin Hood as they was on the manhunt to look for him. Didn't get into details of how they called him and all of that, but the feds is the feds, and I'm going to tell you give up some game for about the feds to y'all through my experience the steps that i had to walk through uh doing my incarceration and dealing with the united states of america this og weaves urban conversion man and i'm out peace hit that like and subscribe button